the much-awaited second album from Oasis, What's the Story, Morning Glory, has become a Britpop folktale, in part because the band was on the verge of collapse during the first week of the six-week recording session due to a violent altercation between Noel Gallagher and Liam Gallagher. A fight? Asked one of the group's companions. There were fire extinguishers, air rifles, and a TV that was still plugged in and hanging out the window. Aboard Liam, who was still waiting to be called in to record his vocals, passed the afternoon of the 1995 session in a South Wales studio in a local bar, where he made some acquaintances over a lot of alcohol. Noel took offense when he returned to the studio with his newfound fan base. As he attempted to compel the gathering to depart, Liam went crazy and attacked his brother's guitars and lunged at him. Noel struck back with a cricket bat. Michael Spencer Jones, the band's photographer, claimed to have witnessed a few brawls in the past, but this one was on another level. The scene of destruction in Liam's room afterwards was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was an absolute mess. It resembled a nuclear explosion that had just occurred. The band returned a week later to finish recording the album, which went on to sell a record 345,000 copies in its first week, after paying the studio 800 pounds for the damage. It was all just a part of being a rock and roll star for Liam. As was having a drunken brawl in Munich in 2002 that resulted in his teeth being knocked out, forcing his five-star hotel to be stormed by 20 armed police officers and costing him 50,000 euros in fines. You may see then why the Oasis reunion tour organizers are a little nervous about next year's highly anticipated tour. However, Liam has transformed. There have been no reports of broken guitars or TVs hanging out of windows while he was on his solo tour this summer. Having consumed 24 cans of premium lager during his writing period in the late 1990s, the 51-year-old now only has one beer after every show and goes to bed by midnight. Debbie Gwither, a 40-year-old manager and longtime partner of Liam, is the force behind the makeover. Hailed as his savior, she is the lady who has managed to pull off an absolutely sober Gallagher tour of Britain, taming the rock legend. According to a friend of Liam's, he is like a different person on this tour. There isn't any rock and roll. Everything is pretty mild and reasonable. Debbie is aware of Liam's best interests. She treats him harshly. She is not only his manager, but also his girlfriend. Therefore, she is well-versed in what has to be done. In contrast to his past partners and lovers, he pays attention to Debbie, loves her, and has faith in her abilities. Longtime friends of Liam acknowledge that it takes a very strong character to exert any kind of influence over him. He loves her and is aware of the great impact she has had on his life, even though many have tried and failed. She doesn't take any s asterisk asterisk asterisk, to put it simply. Debbie not only helped Liam, who proposed to her in 2019 on the Amalfi coast of Italy, get sober, but a close source claims that she played a key role in arranging the reunion of Oasis. Although the smart businesswoman has exerted pressure on global promoters Live Nation and SJM, as well as Noel's group, her most significant negotiation achievement has been with the two brothers. According to a source, Debbie entered the scene following the band's breakup and was a cooler head without all the baggage. Debbie amazed everyone. Let's just say that things would not have turned out quite as well as they did in the end if it weren't for her. She was adamant about getting Liam and his brother back on stage. She has been saying for years that she believes they should try to make amends. She also loves Liam's family, particularly his mother Peggy, and wants them to make amends for her as well. It's difficult to think that this would have occurred without her. She ought to use her abilities to work for the UN. Growing up in Stevenage, Hertfordshire, Debbie was a working-class kid. Her mother stayed at home and she was the daughter of a postman. Instead of attending college, she relocated to East London's Dalston in her late teens in search of employment in the music business. Debbie first worked with Liam in 2013 as his personal assistant, having accepted a position with his then-management business quest, which was headed by Scott Roger, Paul McCartney's manager. After his 2014 divorce from All Saints singer Nicole Appleton, the two started dating. During his marriages to Ms. Appleton and actress Patsy Kensett, he had resided in Primrose Hill, North London, and he claimed that Debbie had shown him a whole new world. Additionally, he raised his two boys, Jean, age 23, and Lennon, age 24. There.
Patsy is their mother. As Liam says, Debbie saved him. Debbie swooped me up as I was falling, he claimed. All she said was, Stop being such a D asterisk 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 head. She brought me out of the house, exposed me to a wide range of individuals, and encouraged me to do new things. I spent a lot of time in London, but my true home was Hampstead. She was a breath of fresh air, man, he continued. She really figured me out. We share similar interests and activities. We enjoy a good laugh. I found my sole partner and my match. The reason it's good is that the boys and children adore her. However, Debbie's reputation for stern sobriety wasn't always established. When they first appeared on the London rock and roll scene, she and her sister Katie, who also works in the music industry and assists Liam in managing his career, had a reputation as party ladies. They were frequent attendees at events and owned Fear PR, a public relations firm. Debbie and Katie used to frequent gritty bars for late-night drinking sessions, but few people are thought to be able to match their tenacity. When they wanted to be, they were a pretty wild pair, an insider says. However, they have now cooled down. This year, Debbie and Liam not only bought a four million pound house nearby, but they also moved to a manor house close to Stroud in the Cotswolds. It is believed that they are paying 17,000 pounds a month to rent the property. Friends claim that the move is just another aspect of the new Liam. The pair spends less time tending to the bar at the Flask, their local in London, and more time walking their dog on a nearby common. Liam gets up at five in the morning to go for a run. Friends point out that he would have still been out partying at that hour in his pre debbie years. The Liam I know and the Liam in the public light are quite different. According to Debbie, whose late coma wedding to Liam was postponed last year due to his hip surgery, he may be impetuous and profane, but that doesn't mean being soft-spoken and impetuous can't coexist. He is quite dependent on his family. I adore him because of the way he treats myself, my family, his children, and his mother. I understood that unless he was singing, he would never be content. Nevertheless, things haven't always been simple. In 2018, Liam was seen in an unpleasant late-night incident at London's celebrity hotspot Chiltern Firehouse, seemingly assaulting Debbie. Liam seemed to put his hands on her neck in a drunken altercation captured on camera, which led to further inquiries from the police. Despite this, the couple vehemently denied any wrongdoing, and Debbie was upset that the pictures were made public. They are accustomed to flaming situations. That is their reality, as one source subsequently stated. What appears terrifying to some individuals felt differently to them, and they handled it on their own. Their lives aren't as filled with fiery times now. Liam actually enjoys wonderful relationships with each of his kids. He had a brief affair with model Lisa Moorish when he was married to Miss Kensett, which caused him to become separated from his oldest daughter, 26-year-old Molly. That was Debbie as well, a buddy adds. He listens to her when she knows what's best for Liam. Hopefully, she can maintain peace for the sold-out tour next year.